All right, so welcome back to another video where we're going to prep for the December SAT. If you're studying for a different SAT, it's okay because it's primarily the same test. So let's begin. Question one. In the equation above, what is the value of x? So the first thing I would do is combine like terms on each side of the equation. So it's separated by this equal sign. So 3x plus x plus x plus x minus 3. So we can combine all of these x's. How many x's are there? 1, 2, 3 plus the 3. So in total, there are 6x minus 3 minus 2, and negative 3 minus 2 should give us negative 5, right? That's equal to 7 plus x plus x. x plus x is what? That's 2x. So on this side, the right-hand side is 2x plus 7. And now let's move everything to one side. Usually I move the smaller x value, so in this case, 2x. So we move it by subtracting. Subtracting is give us 4x minus 5 is equal to 2x minus 2x gets us out. That's equal to 7. Add 5 on both sides, giving us 4x is equal to 7 plus 5, which is 12. And then we divide both sides by 4, because opposite of multiplication, 4 times x is division. Well, divide both sides, x is equal to 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Meaning the answer for the value of x has to be 3. So moving on to question 2, we have in the, gra the graph above shows the distance traveled d in feet by a product of the conveyor belt m minutes after the product is placed on the belt. Which of the following equations correctly relates d and m? So how do we do this one? Basically, we have to find the equation, right? Where d is our y value. So basically, what is the slope? The slope is calculated over rise over run. So how many does it rise? Rise is 1, 2 over run, which is 1. So the slope is 2 over 1, which is basically 2. So which of the following have a slope of 2? Well, looking at this, the slope for this is 2. So for this, 1 half, so that's out. The slope for this is 1, so that's out. This one has a slope of 2. So what's the difference between a and d? The difference is that the y-intercept. So where's the y-intercept? It's basically where the x value is 0. So the x value of 0 is right here. What's the y value? It's also 0. So it means there's no y-intercept. So this one has a y-intercept of 2. That one's out. So your answer should be a. Moving on. Question 3. The formula below is often used. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to skip this part. So the question is asking, which of the following correctly gives P in terms of E, O, and M? So we have to isolate P, given this equation right here. So the first thing I'll do is multiply both sides by 6. Doing so eliminates this fraction, which we don't want. So that gives us 6E is equal to O plus 4M plus P. Now, in order to get rid of everything that's not P on one side, we're just going to subtract O and subtract 4M, because I don't want this to be with P. So it gives me 6E minus o minus 4m is equal to p well we have isolated p meaning your answer should look like this also meaning your answer should be a question four in the figure above rt is equal to t what is the value of x so rt where's rt rt is right here and that's equal to t so let's mark that down we mark down a congruency by writing two of these so to show that two sides are equal and what's the value of x so solving this, well, we know that this is 114, right? That also means what? That means that these two angles are equal. Well, if these two angles are equal, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that 114 plus this angle, which we'll call x. Actually, no, we'll not call it x because there's x there. Let's not confuse ourselves. We'll call it y. So each of these should be the same because opposite sides have opposite angles. And in this case, both angles have to be equal because both sides are equal. So x, I mean y and y, so that's 2y, 114 plus 2y. That's equal to how many degrees inside of a triangle? It's 180. Now we subtract 114 on both sides, giving us 2y is equal to 180 minus 114, which should be 66. Divide, divide both sides by 2, giving us y is equal to 33. So the measure of each of these are 33. Then now let's also find the measure of this. How can we do that? So we know that this is 114, and this is a straight line meaning this angle has to be supplementary. So this angle, 114, plus this angle, which we'll call T, T has to add up to 180, because that's what a straight line is equal to. So minus 114 on both sides, giving us T is equal to 66. So this angle should be 66. Well, that also means that this angle is what? 31 plus 66 plus this angle, which we'll call W, has to equal to 180. We solve for that. Um, it's basically the same thing. W will be equal to, that's 97. 
should be equal to uh, 83. So that equals equal to 83. And then we go, this angle is adjacent, so that means it's 83. So 83 plus, uh, what was this angle measured? 33 plus x, the angle we're trying to find, plus x has to equal to this triangle, which is 180 degrees, giving us 116 plus x is equal to 180, meaning x is equal to 64. Meaning the answer has to be C. This question took a lot of work. If you couldn't follow along, rewatch a little bit, see how I got each angle measure, but this is exactly how you would do this. Question five. The width of a triangle dance floor, triangular, rectangular dance floor is W feet. The length of the floor is six feet longer than its width. Which of the following expresses the perimeter and feet of the dance floor in terms of W? So let's just draw the rectangular dance floor. Should look something like that. It's a horrible rectangle, but I'll have to do for now. The length is six feet longer than the width. Well, we'll call this W, the width, right? That's what they, the W. Okay, because that's the width. The length is of the floor is six feet longer than the width, so this the length has to be w plus six. Now the question is asking for the perimeter, so this has to be w, this has to be w plus six, right? Opposite sides have the same measure, so the perimeter is when we add up all of these w plus w plus w plus w, it's four w plus six plus six, which is twelve. We add up the w's and we add up the numbers. Four w plus twelve should be your perimeter, also meaning b is your answer. Question six, which of the following consists of the y coordinates of all points that satisfy the systems of equations above? So basically, we, I see that two x has to be greater than five. And there's also a two x in this equation. So why don't we just plug it in? So y has to be greater than five minus one, basically. I mean, y has to be greater than four. Your answer has to be b. I guess this question requires a little bit of logic as this, both sides are facing the same way. So that's why you're able to plug it in. Otherwise, you can't really do that. Question seven, what is the solution set of the equation above? So first thing I would do is minus four on both sides, just so I have the square root on one side. So when you do minus four on both sides, the square root of two X plus six is equal to X minus one. Three minus four is negative one. And now since we have this, I'm gonna square root or square both sides to cancel out the square root because you never want a square root. So when you square root a square, cancels out, giving 2x plus 6 is equal to x minus 1 squared, which, if you guys know your formula, is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so I want to form a quadratic now, right? So let's get one side to 0. So I subtract 2x and subtract x, 6 from both sides. Give me 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, can we factor this? Yes, we can. We can factor this out into x minus 5, x plus 1. So it means the solution should be 5 and negative 1. But before that, we have to do a quick check. So if we plug in 5, does it work? It's going to be 4 plus 4, 8. That works. Negative 1, we plug it in. Um, 2 plus 4, wait. Two. Nope, negative one should not work if you plug it back in because that's gonna be equal to two plus four, which is not equal to negative one plus three. Yeah, that should not work. So negative one is out of your solution, meaning five is your only answer. So B has to be your answer. Always to remember to do the check, even though you might think you have the answers, because C is not correct, even though technically we obtained that answer. Question seven, or question eight, which we wrote into a little. So we have these two functions, which are following expressions equivalent to f of x over g of x, where x is greater than three. So f of x over g of x. So that's gonna be x to the third minus nine x over g of x, which is x squared minus two x minus three. So let's simplify these by factoring. So what is in common, what is common in both of these? x, so let's factor out the x. So x times x squared minus nine over should we factor this? It's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. Well, is it possible to factor this x squared minus 9? Yes, it is. Because then we get x times x plus 3, x minus 3. Right, and this is the difference of squares. So it's a nice thing to remember. So that's how factorization is easier.
over x minus 3 times x plus 1. What's a common factor in both of them? x plus 3. So, or, no, not x plus 3, x minus 3. So this should be x times x plus 3, x plus 1. Is this factorable or cancelable? No. So it means your answer has to be t. Question 9. In the xy plane, the graph of a function above is a circle. Point P on the circle has coordinates 10, negative 5. If PQ is a diameter of the circle, what are the coordinates of point Q? Okay, so let's see. Basically, this is one of the points, so we have to find out the other end point. So how long is this circle? It has a radius of how much? So this is always the r squared value. So it means r squared is equal to 14, or 16. It means r is equal to 4. So the radius is 4, meaning the diameter is equal to 8. So one of the four points is 8 away from this. Well, it has to be either 10 plus 8 or 10 minus 8 for the x value. So that's 18 or 2. Well, there's no 18, but there is a 2, negative 5. So that's perfect. So that right there is your answer for because we just found the x value. If this didn't exist, we would try it on the y value, negative 5 plus 8 or negative 5 minus 8 to find the answer. But in this case, it works out perfectly for us, so we don't even have to do that. Question 10. A group of 202 people went on an overnight camping trip, uh, taking 60 tents with them. Some of the tents held two people each, and the rest held four people each. Assuming all the tents were filled to capacity, and every person got to sleep in a tent, except how many of the tents were two persons' tents? Well, we have to set up an equation, right? So there are 60 tents, so let's call that x plus y is equal to 60. Some of the tents, which we'll call the two people tents, is 2x plus the four people tents, which we'll call 4y, is equal to total amount of 202 people. So we just set up a system of equations. The question is asking us to find how many of the tents were two purpose in the tents. So it means we have to find the value of x. So doing this, let's make it equal to set the y's equal. So how do we get the y equal to 4y? Multiply this top equation by 4. 4 times x, 4x, 4 times y, 4y is equal to 4 times 60, 240. Now let's subtract, but we're subtracting backwards. So in this case, 4x minus 2x is 2x. 4y minus 4y is 0. 240 minus 202 is equal to 38. Divide both sides by 2 to give us x. Opposite of multiplication is division. x is equal to 38 divided by 2, which is 19. Meaning the amount of two people tense is c. 19. Moving on. Question 11. Which of the following could be the equation of the graph above? So basically, let's find all your roots. One of the roots is negative 3, another root is 0, and pay attention because this is called a double root. Why is it a double root? Because it technically touches the x-axis but never crosses it. So that's why it's a double root. Watch out. And another one is negative 2. So which one has a double root? So x squared always means a double root, right? Whenever you see something squared in your factorization, it means it's a double root. So I'm just going to cancel out a and c first because there's no double root shown. And now negative 2 is a solution. So this one doesn't work because that is 2 as a solution. Because negative 2 minus 2 does not equal 0. Whereas this one, root of 0, perfect. Negative 2 plus 2, 0, perfect. Negative 3 minus 3. Oh, sorry about that. I actually did the opposite of what I was supposed to do. X squared works. 2 minus 2 works. Negative 3 minus negative 3 plus 3 is also 0. 0, 0, 0, perfect. Then the answer has to be B. So this is basically the factorization of this graph right here. So well, if 2A over B is equal to 1 half, what's the value of B over A? So basically, let's just set values for A and B. So if I call A equal to 1, what's the value of B? So 2 over B, right, 2 times 1 is 2, over B is equal to 1 half. Well, it has to be 2 over 4, right? 2 over 4 is equal to 1 half, half is equal to half. So the value of b is equal to 4. So what's the value of b over a? That's just equal to 4 over 1. b over a. 4 over 1 is equal to what? That's equal to 4. And your answer has to be b. As long as you set numbers from variables that aren't already listed, you should always have your answer. Okay, 13. Oil and gas production in a certain area dropped from 4 million barrels in 2000 to 1.9 barrels in 2013. Assuming that all the oil and gas production decreased at a constant rate, which of the following linear functions f best models the production in millions of barrels t years after the year 2000? 
So right now, looking at our answer choices, you're gonna have to find out the slope of it. So it decreased, right? So it definitely has to be a negative slope. So A is certainly out of the question because that's not a negative slope. So the slope is 4 million to 1.9. So a million, so that's 4, point, 4 minus 1.9 over the amount of years, right? What's the year change? It's from 2000 to 2013. 4, mil 4 million gallons in 2000, 1.9 in 2013. Always make sure to line up your variables when you're subtracting. 4 minus 1.9 is 2.1 over 2000 minus 2013, which is negative 13. And now, and then your answer choices, basically, they multiplied by 10 on both top and bottom to cancel it out, right? This is a whole number in front. 2.1 times 10 is 21 over 13 times 10, which is... 130. So your slope is negative 21 over 130. Meaning answer has to be C because this is the only one with a slope of negative 21 over 130. And for the final two questions of the multiple choice section, how many solutions are there to the system equation above? So right now we have these two equations, right? So what we're going to do is I'll probably want to set the y equals the y values equal. So let's move everything without the y with this equation y minus 5x plus 8 is equal to 0. I'm going to move everything on the other side by adding 5x and subtracting it, doing the opposite. That gives me y is equal to 5x minus 8. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. And doing so gives me, because they both equal to y, so 5x minus 8 is equal to this right here, x squared plus 3x minus 7. Now let's set up a quadratic by moving everything back on this side. So I have it equal to zero. This cancels out, give me zero is equal to x squared, 3x minus 5x is negative 2x, negative 7 plus 8 is positive 1. Now we factor x minus 1 squared is equal to zero, give me x is equal to 1. Well, given that there's only one x value, there should be only one y value corresponding. So it means there's only one solution. Because there's only one x value, one y value, one solution. Question 15. The function g and f are defined. What is the value of h of 0? So h of 0 is equal to 1 minus g of 0. So what's the value of g of 0? g of 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. So it's 2 times the x value, which is 0 in this case, minus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So let's plug this back into this equation because we just found the value of g of 0. So h of 0 is equal to 1 minus negative 1, because that's a g of 0 value. So that's equal to 1 minus minus is positive, plus 1, it's going to be 2. Meaning your answer has to be T. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to be posting the short response section soon, which is five questions only. But this is the whole entire multiple choice. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.